Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Jackie and let's get started. For day one number one, I'm going to begin by searching through Creative Fabrica for some cool graphics. They are a marketplace for premium crafting fonts, graphics, and more. And of all these fonts and graphics, I chose a couple ones I want to use. I want to use this one. It's like a double stacked jack-o-lantern. And it's actually a coloring page. But I'm going to do something totally different that's going to blow your mind. <laughs> so here it is. I've selected it. I downloaded it. And now I'm going to get ready to print it out in my printer. Here it is. But instead of paper, I'm going to use these labels. These are full size labels that I purchased off of Amazon and I'll have everything linked in my description box. They are full length paper size sheets. And I'm going to place some of this chiffon type of fabric that I got from one of the thrift stores. It was like a little girl's dress. It was only a couple dollars, but the chiffon was fantastic. So here I placed all the chiffon on two of these sheets just in case I have any issues, but I didn't have any issues. It was perfect. So here it is going in through my printer. It's just a regular Kodak printer, nothing fancy. And the best thing about this method here is if you want to print on fabric, this is how you do it. You get these long paper size labels and it works great. Look at this. It's so detailed and I specifically chose this graphic because it's so detailed. And I didn't want the colored one. I wanted the black and white one to look classy. So here it is. Now I'm going to remove the fabric from the label. I'm just going to very gently pull it off. I don't want to stretch out my chiffon fabric too much. And I chose the chiffon fabric because it's a little bit translucent, transparent, and it's going to be fantastic for what I'm about to create. So now here I'm taking some parchment paper and I'm placing one of my sheets and I'm placing another piece of parchment paper and I'm going to heat set it with my mini easy press just to make sure all the ink won't wash off because this will be outside. So I want to make sure it's nice and set and I want to make sure none of the ink is going to come off. And look, the parchment paper is clean as a whistle, so it worked great. So now here it is, ready to go for my little DIY, and this is going to be super simple. I'm just going to create a porch flag with this. So I'm just going to take two of these jumbo size craft sticks and snip off the two rounded ends. And then I'm going to use my crocodile to create some holes. That way I can string some jute twine for the hanger. And I'll do this to both of the sticks, make sure that they're lined up perfectly. And now I'm just gonna go in with some of the Waverly chalk paint and the color ink to paint them up. And then I'll take some of the Waverly chalk paint and the color plaster to give them a dry brush and make them look a little spooky because when this fabric is flowing in the wind, it's going to look a little bit spooky. <laughs> so here I'm taking my fabric and placing it near my first craft stick and I'm going to go in with some of the Elaine's Tacky Glue. And there is an Elaine's Tacky Glue for fabric as well, but this is the one I have on hand and this one does work pretty well for fabric too. So this is what I'm going to use. And I'm just going to do a couple beads going across and then placing my other craft stick on top to sandwich the top end of my chiffon piece of fabric. And now I'm gonna allow this to sit overnight just to make sure everything dries well and cures nicely. And I'm gonna use these craft clips to keep them in place and get them nice and tight. And here's the next day, everything is nice and tight. Everything adhered just very well. And now I'm gonna use some of this black Two twine. I'm not sure where I got it. It was in my stash, but I'm sure it's not difficult to find. And I'm just going to use some of this for a hanger. And I'm just going to poke it through the hole and do a good triple knot. When I say triple knot, I'm going to wind it up three times. That way the knot stays and it doesn't slip off. Now I'm going to remove all the excess jute twine. And now I'm just going to simply embellish with a little bit of creepy cloth. And I'll just place some on both ends just to make it look creepier as it flows in the wind. <laughs> and here's how it looks and the closer look at the final reveal. 
This video is a part of It's the Great Jack-O-Lantern Halloween DIYs, and I'm collaborating today with my sweet friend Michelle from Moxie DIY and Java. And here are some of her previous projects that she's created. She is very talented. So I hope you guys can check out her video. And also with Marie from Desert Rose Crafting. And here are some of her previous projects. She is very talented as well, as you can see. So definitely when you're done watching my video, go to my description box, click the link to the playlist that I've created for us three and enjoy the playlist. For DIY number two, I'm going to begin with four of these paper towel holders. They're the metal ones from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to paint them with this black paint from Lowe's. And I'm going to use some of these cable ties from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to put them together end to end to create some axles and wheels. So I'm just going to use these cable ties or zip ties. And I'm going to secure them together with six of these and six different spots. So one on each side on each end and two in the center. So a total of six. Now I'm going to remove all of the excess and I'll do this to two of these. So I'll have a set of two. So now I'm taking one of these trays, these silver trays from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna go in with the Waverly Chalk Pin in the color ink. And since this is metal, I'm going to also go in with some Mod Podge. Now I'm gonna use my Crop-A-Dial. I'm gonna flip over the tray and I'm going to create some holes so I can attach these to my axles, my wheels, and I'll do two on each of the short ends and four on the long ends. So now that I have it all ready, I'm going to attach my tray to my axles with the zip ties or cable ties, and this is just so simple, just putting it through and pulling it tight. And I do this to the, all four of the short ends, but I don't do the others yet. So now I'm going to snip off the excess and then I'll set this aside and bring it back a little later. In the meantime, I'm going to take two of these pumpkin wreath forms from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to go in with some of this Just Chenille black yarn. Oh my goodness, this stuff is so soft and velvety. I love this stuff. And I'm just going to start wrapping this around this whole wreath form, and I'll just go watch a movie, get myself busy, and come back when it's all wrapped up, and I do this to two. So yeah, this part took a little while, but it's so worth it. And you can also use black pipe cleaners if you wanna go a little quicker. So now for this part, you definitely need some of this chenille yarn because I'm going to create the jack-o'-lantern's face. So it's not gonna be the traditional triangle eyes, but it's just going to be like square eyes or rectangular eyes. And this is acceptable because you can create a jack-o'-lantern any way you want. You can't go wrong. With Halloween, you really can't go wrong. So here are the two eyes, and I'm going to create the mouth. And again, my mouth is not going to be traditional. It's going to be just like a little smiley face. <laughs> it's just gonna be a happy one. <laughs> it's gonna be a happy jack-o'-lantern. So I'm just gonna keep wrapping this around, making sure it's nice and secure on each of the wires. And so as I go through each wire, I'm going to create kind of, not a knot, but I'm just going to secure it with wrapping it a few times in this manner. And then here on the end, this one on this side, I made it more like a smile. So now I'm going to have to fix this one a little bit and get a, get the gap to close up a little bit to make it look like a smile, but it could be a crooked smile too. Like I said, you really can't go wrong. And now just secure everything with knots. And that's the great thing about this chenille yarn that you really can't tell where the knots are. The only problem is it gets messy. You can see all those black spots on my table. Yeah, it just, it does uh, kind of fall apart when you cut them. So yeah, that's the only bad part about this stuff. So now here I'm creating the nose to kind of make the triangle, but I had to secure it to the eyes, but that's okay. You can still see it, the jack-o'-lantern. I mean, I can see it. So I did this to both. And now I flipped it over to its front, so where it's curved. And I'm going to adhere some hot glue onto the chenille yarn. And I'm going to gently place some of this chiffon fabric that's also from that little girl's dress. <laughs> Which let me tell you, that this dress was a little bit like old looking, so this is perfect. And I'm just going to continue this, go all the way around, and this is another reason why it's good to have the chenille yarn because it'll hold the hot glue whereas the metal 
wires won't. So now here I'm going to trim off all the excess fabric and I'm just going to leave a little bit on the very top because I like the way that looks. And once I'm finished with that, then I'm ready to place these two jack-o'-lantern wreath forms on my tray and I'm going to secure them with some more of the cable ties or zip ties. And now I'm using the extra little holes that I place on the long ends of the tray. This is a little bit tricky. I kind of had to get my fingers in there, but it was hard for me to show you guys what I'm doing. So I went ahead and switched and placed my camera up front. So I hope this helps a little bit. So now here you can see a little bit better, I think. So now I'm just going to remove all the excess cable tie. And look at this, it's taking form. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. So now I have to do the other side. And I basically do the same thing, but I'm going to go ahead and show you guys on this one since the other one you really couldn't see very well. So I'm just going to kind of balance it on there and then place the zip tie and then go through the hole and on the very bottom tie it up. And that's really it. It's super simple. So now once I get this done, it's time to have some fun. Oh my goodness. I can't wait to show you guys what I do with this thing. <laughs> oh my goodness. I felt like a little kid. <laughs> Okay, so here I'm just removing the excess zip tie. Now I'm going to place it forward so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm going to place this block of wood and I'm just going to add some more of that fabric, place it on there. Add the extra chiffon fabric on there for cushion. And here we go. Look, the skeleton bride <laughs> and the groom. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I'm just going to add a dab of glue on the head because the head was going everywhere. It's just too crazy. <laughs> so. Went ahead and secured the head, placed her in there, placed him in there as well. Yeah. And now I'm taking these foam roses. I'm going to create a quick little bouquet for her. And so now I'm going to add a little black flower on her head. Look at her. Oh my goodness. So now I'm going to take this piece of wood from the Dollar Tree. It's one of those planks. I'm going to go in with the Waverly Chalk Paint in the color ink and do a little dry brushing with the Waverly Chalk Paint in the color plaster because you know you got to give it that spooky look. So much fun. So now with my Cricut and one of the fonts from Creative Fabrica, I created this. This is Just Buried. <laughs> How fun. <laughs> And I'm just going to remove the transfer tape and then I'll seal everything up with some Mod Podge and this will go on the back of my carriage along with some bones that are being dragged with some jute twine. How fun! And now for the front of my carriage, I'm going to use this horse and this is also from the Dollar Tree. It's a squirrel feeder. You're supposed to place like a piece of corn on the top of it or something. I never used it but I thought it was cute and it's finally coming in handy. So I'm just going to spray paint it with this black spray paint from Lowe's. And I'm just going to use a few of these embellishments from the Dollar Tree. And here's how it looks and a closer look at the final reveal. For DIY number three, I'm going to use this full pack of color your own wooden ornaments from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just simply going to add some hot glue and adhere all these together to create one nice thick block of wood. And I'm going to go in with the jack-o'-lantern paint by Apple Barrel and now I'm going to do some dry brushing with some of the Waverly Chalk Paint in the color plaster and also use a little bit of the Waverly Chalk Paint in the color ink. I use the plaster for the majority of this jack-o'-lantern and I apologize that I go out of frame just a tiny little bit. I think I must have moved my camera. I'm not sure what happened there but once I figured it out then for the dry brushing of the color ink I do realize okay <laughs> I was out of frame a little bit. So the ink, I'm just going to use a little bit for the mouth and the eyes just to give it a little bit of a spooky look. And I really like the fact that it's looking more like a block of wood instead of just little thin ornaments of wood. And this is perfect for a garland. So yes, absolutely, we're going to create a cute little garland, wood beaded garland. And I'm going to use, instead of jute twine, I'm going to use some more of this chenille yarn, which... It's not easy, but it comes out cute. So I'm just going to use my weeding tool to help poke it through the holes of my beads. And like I said, it's just going to be a small wood beaded garland for a tear tray. Look how cute. So I'm just, again, just going to use my weeding tool to help poke it through. And I'm just going to tie it in a good secure knot. And then I'll poke this back up into the first bead. That way it's nice secure. You can't find the end. And once I get that on there, then I'll 
snip off the excess and pull all the beads back down so you won't see a knot or anything now on the other end I'm going to create my tassel and the great thing about this chenille yarn is the tassel part it looks like a spider <laughs> yeah it ends up looking like a spider so cute that was not my intention my intention was just to make a uh, tassel but yeah it looks like a spider to me so once I tie this piece to my beaded garland then I'm going to tie the tassel up top to make sure it's nice and secure give it a good triple knot and then snip off all the excess and as you can see this stuff just makes a mess oh my goodness <laughs> but it's so much fun this and it's so nice so now here I cut open the tassel portion and I need to secure this other end up in the first bead as well so I just use my poking tool again and poke it all the way through and once I get it through the other side then I'll pull it taut and snip off the excess and now we can make sure that this is nice and secure so here I'm just trying to poke it in there in the meantime all this stuff is just flying everywhere because I have my fan on <laughs> and that's all I do then I give it a nice haircut and then I do go in with a little bit of creepy cloth and tie it where I tied the tassel closed and that is it for this one super cute super easy and the block looks more substantial here's how it looks and a closer look at the final reveal if you're on Instagram here's my QR code I would love it for you to join me there follow me there here is my TikTok. here is my Pinterest handle and here are some of my boards and pins and I like to organize them by holidays seasons themes etc just nice and neat so you can easily find them all and there's quite a few so yeah <laughs> lots and lots of boards and pins and I also have a crafting group over on Facebook and it's called family and budget friendly crafting world I would love you for joining me there and now we're at the final reveal tell me what you guys think <laughs> I want to take a moment and thank Michelle from Moxie DIY and Java and Marie from Desert Rose Crafting for joining me in this collaboration today. I had a lot of fun creating for this video and I hope you guys please 
check out their videos as well. It's a short playlist and the link is in my description box. It's just the three of us. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know which one's your favorite. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And if you want to see more, you definitely subscribe. And until my next video, stay healthy, safe, and strong. And have a great, great day. Bye-bye.